Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I am taking a look at something called Children of a Dead Earth. We are the children, the world is dead, and this game was released on Friday when I was on vacation. You know, wedding anniversary and all this. Which is why I have like 400 emails from people asking me, will I play this? And of course the answer by now you will have guessed is yes. So, Children of a Dead Earth basically wants to be a very realistic space warfare simulator. And if you take a look at the spaceship designs, you will see that they are, well, like big cylinders in space with big glowy radiators. And, you know, numbers, millimeters, megawatts, tons. Uh, yeah, everything is about as far as it's possible to get from the aesthetic of Star Citizen. These are cigars with nuclear reactors in one end, guns sticking out the front, and maybe some people on board to kind of go down with the ship. So yeah, let's come back and actually do one of the missions just so you can get an idea. This is the false flag mission, it's the first combat mission. And uh, if you click through, you have all these little guides on apoapses, orbit phasing, orbital elements, station keeping. You can take a look at the factions such as USTA, the United Sol Trade Alliance, who are basically bad guys in this case. Celestial Bodies, Ganymede, yes, you can find out all about this. You can see the spacecraft, yes, patrol ship. The enemy craft is a laser skiff, which will not be able to match the range of my weapons. These are the weapons, of course. And, oh, we also have decoys, but let's just get this whole thing started here. Children at Earth. Okay, don't worry about combat for now, just intercept your enemy. So yeah, we are going to intercept our enemy, and of course, this is going to be like Kerbal Space Program here, right? We're going to have to follow real orbital mechanics here. Incidentally, of course, this also does three body mechanics. So if I run, if basically Jupiter is going to be perturbing everything, right? If I run this forwards in time, you'll see that the red orbit is changing because the target's orbit is getting perturbed. So I think what I want to do is just begin a maneuver here, grab this and start burning and then hoping that I get an encounter with the target. Ah, there we go. We're going to cross the orbit at quite some speed. It'll be 951 meters per second. But I think I can make this intercept happen. Let's do that. Intercept. Bang! There we go. Close the notification. And then finally we will have another burn. Oh, let's just run it forward. Burn made. Orbit changed. Intercept happening. Intercept, and we have encountered the target. Welcome to combat. You can disable this in the options, that's great. This is my rangefinder, it shows the kind of overview of the battle. You can see how long it will take to encounter the target, two minutes. The red diamond is at the top is them, and the green diamond is me. I can see my weapon ranges, so I have a turreted cannon that's got like a 12 kilometer range. I have a railgun that will be able to hit at out to 33 kilometers. Uh, oh shoot, I made a mistake here. All the weapons auto fire, I can give my ship orders here, so let's tell it to go full homing. Select the enemy ship, and then select the green laser to be one of the things we want to kill. You can target enemy systems here. Targeting too many systems at once will defocus the fire, so select just one. We've targeted just one. I've done that. That's all. And combat should start running after this message. And... Go! There. So my weapon systems are going to start firing. See, we're in range. My railguns are on the side of the ship, so I need to tell them to orient to broadside. See, these are... Well, there's silicon dioxide radiators. These are my railguns. These are my cannons. And out there is the target that's going to get punished by them. So my spacecraft is turning. This is a big nuclear uh, rocket engine, which is, of course, irradiating us. You can mouse over your spacecraft to see the different parts. We have a crew module at the front. We have a crew module there. We have methane tanks. The enemy is suffering damage. Yes, their armor is being damaged. So we can actually look at this to see what's going on here. Also, I can visualize it in the armor visualizer. 
So the areas will be, the little panels will be modeled, we'll be able to watch this happen. Okay, so watch as my weapons hit. I think I'm actually going to hit these radiators as well. Hit their big radiators so that they can't fire their weapon systems. Yes! That is nice. These big radiators are obviously for keeping the nuclear power plant cool. Incoming we took out an enemy module. Let's select their craft, like I've already done. So I've disabled one of their lasers, and that's all. So we're continuing to hit their uh, hit their radiators because I know that will just make thing make it hard. Ha! Incoming Excellent. So we've disabled all their lasers, just, I think, because they're radiators. Oh yeah, so the enemy laser skiff has lost power generation, right? And probably because the power plant is pretty close to those radiators that I was shooting out. I'm not sure if he can mouse over and see the internals, but yeah, that is pretty good. And that's the level at which they you know, model all this. Where's my target? There I am there, flying past still. I can select my patrol ship. I wonder if there's like a hold position now and gloat. How do you teabag in space warfare? Next. Next mission. Now, it's a more difficult mission as the next one. After you wrecked the Eusta's rogue spacecraft, we saw a spike in aggressive Usta activity, especially around the belt. In particular, they had a warship patrolling the belt when they received word of us destroying their rogue spacecraft. Shortly thereafter, they diverted that spacecraft to Mercury, jointly controlled by us and another faction. Mercury is rather important for us tactical operations. Ordinarily, we'd send numerous threats and warnings to the Usta not to violate our orbital space, perhaps hitting them with trade sanctions, but actually making good on those threats wouldn't be worth it to us. Here's the issue, with tensions rising over property rights within the Eusta these days and with their aggression at Ganymede, we've started to do a lot of things we might not normally do. In particular, we've threatened destruction of their ship if they violate orbital space, which they have, so we're going to make good in our promise. Yes, you're going to destroy their ship. So yeah, um, we got all these warnings about retaliation and things like this. We get all our reading, and we now have the Iroquois... Resurgent, which I thought they were an Indian tribe, but I guess they now are in space. We're dealing with the planet of Mercury. We have an escort carrier, that's me, which has the ability to launch uh, Stinger drones. The enemy craft has a corvette, which has big, big, uh, co powerful coil guns. So I'm going to have to deal with that. So we have turreted coil guns, decoil launchers, rail guns, all that stuff. So let's uh, let's begin this mission. Incoming transmission. Okay, for this mission, I recommend launching drones. You know what? I don't care. I've done this before. We're gonna disable help. Suffice to say, I have essentially an escort carrier that can launch drones. But we have to rendezvous. Sorry, we have to intercept this corvette which is in an orbit that is quite high inclination relative to us so they're going that way i am gonna initiate my orbital encounter here so of course i pick the ascending node descending node and we just kind of bring this up and there we get an encounter so yeah match the orbit match the usta orbit and next thing we know encounter it'll all work right this is it we're just pushing the buttons to make this happen now the drones they have engines but they're not nearly as efficient as the carrier so the idea is once we get into roughly the same orbit then we can go into the escort carrier we can say hey you know what launch all the drones launch them all these are dinky little things that have just a uh, I don't know like they have an engine and they have a gun and they have a remote control there's my fleet. Let's take a look at this thing. We have methane at the front. Oh, fluorine! And, uh, yeah, don't know what's that. We have people in there. Oh, yeah, crew module. Crew module dangerously close to nuclear reactors and fluorine. What could possibly go wrong? Anyway, we've done that. The, f the drones are now in their own separate fleet, so I can select them and I can begin plotting their intercept of this, uh, where is it? There they are there, right? 
So to begin, basically to intercept, I'm going to have to slow myself down. Oh, and there I actually can get an intercept. So let's do that. Intercept. Bingo! Run time forwards. Run, run, run. Maybe even run it faster. Six hours. Now one hour. Bingo. And now we're going to impinge on the enemy. So, this enemy has these very powerful coil guns that will just tear up my... Uh, my base, my escort carrier because the range is so long. So let's just tell my uh, stinger drones to uh, to attack those. So uh, begin. Where are they? Uh, wait a second. Oh, there's my dudes up there. Oh wow, they're all turning red with their laser weapons. Oh, it's dodging! It's dodging! Whoa! Oh my god, they shot past. We at least disabled three of their coil guns. Will they come back for another pass? What's going on here? I think I'll prior prioritize these uh, rail guns as well now. Stinger drones. Nine of my drones have been disabled. But you know what? We're just softening this target up for the next encounter. Two points. I think actually this guy is going to be able to pull out a range because I basically have no Delta V left. So, time to bring the escort carrier in. I think I can quit out of this and bring the escort carrier in and have them perform the same kind of attack. So, begin. Slow down. And... Yeah, like, they basically pulled off a maneuver that made, made it impossible for my drones to all hit. So we're gonna do this. Intercept. And go for a run. Six hours. Run, 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 run. Run, run, run. And now we get to encounter. So, ah, uh, what's their deal? They are, I have a 37 whatever turreted railgun range. They have, they're going to be seriously damaged. But we're going to focus on these railguns. Since the, their three other coil guns are taken out. If I just focus on the one of them, then I should be able to do something serious. Now, let me just see. It'll be flyby in one minute. They will get into range just before me. I will get into range a fraction of a second later. So I should be launching all my decoys. I'm going to tell it to just get into broadside. And let's see if we can survive this encounter. Go! Go, go, go! Lodge those decoys! The coil guns could be really bad for me. Oh, there we go! Shooting the target. Weapons fire incoming. Enemy Corvette's armor is being damaged. Whoa! 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 This is looking cool. Look at that! We're... Oh, they're firing back! They're firing everything! Gonna take out all their weapon systems. How come that last coil gun is still staying alive? Yes! Now target the rail guns. Maybe we'll just finish this thing off. Look at the armor! It's just disintegrating! Ha! But their rail guns are still firing. Look at that. Just crazy, crazy, crazy amount of firepower being laid upon them. They will know not to violate our space and future. This will be a lesson to those that think that they have the rights to the space. No, that right must be bought. Incoming transmission. Excellent! This undeclared war is starting on a very good note. Indeed, Admiral, let's get back to port before enemy reinforcements arrive. I'm still firing off the decoys. I'm just, like, putting a big giant V sign or whatever at them. V for victory! I'll, I think it's kind of interesting that they're Mexican piñata colors because of the, you know, the status. Cool though, excellent, and as I've said, yes, this is Children of a Dead Earth. It is a very interesting game with pretty lousy graphics, to be honest. Uh, it has, like, basically the UI, the graphics, the sound, they're all functional at best. But it is a very unique style of gameplay, and I know there's going to be a, people that l a bunch of people that love this niche concept, and so if you've seen this, you probably know by now whether you want to buy it, right? And uh, I hope to I hope to play it a little more. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.